Hi guys, welcome to the CIV podcast. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Daniel. This is Alex, and today's guest is Sarah Walker. She uh, is in ministry with us in praise, and she also has two of her own in our own next gen um, youth group. So. Um, Yeah, we are excited to have this week's podcast come out. And uh, before you guys um, continue this podcast, if you haven't already, you can go back and listen to our previous podcasts. They come out every two weeks on Wednesday at 6 a.m. Pacific Eastern Time. Pacific Eastern Time? (laughs) Pacific Western Time? I don't know, Pacific Time. Pacific Standard Time. Pacific Standard (laughs) Time. PST, something like that. PST, yeah. That would make sense, Pacific Eastern. Anyways... (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Those are two different times. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. They understand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, thank you again for being here. Um, you always get so excited when we have new face here. So um, let's just dive right in. Let's not waste any more time. <laughs> okay, I mean, good. as you mentioned, um, you do serve um, mm-hmm. on the worship team, but I know you also serve on a different ministry. So why don't mm-hmm. you tell us the, what those are and what got you sure. Yeah, why are you doing that? Yeah, so I serve on the greeting team, too. Mm -hmm. I started serving on the greeting team before the worship team. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Pastor Abraham asked me to join and serve on that team, and I thought it was a perfect fit just because I was still relatively new to the church, and I didn't have a ton of connections. And also just, like, I remember the first person who welcomed me into the church and she was like so kind and so warm and part of the reason we stayed so that was Leah so shout out to Leah (laughs) um so I just wanted to be that person too Mm -hmm. so what better way to like connect and get to know people than Mm -hmm. to open the doors for them and say hello and you know ask them how their week was Mm -hmm. and stuff so yeah, and also I had my son greets with me, too. Yeah, and his so. little blue shirt. I love it. Yeah, and it's been good for him, too, because he's also, like, pretty reserved. So <laughs> <laughs> he likes pressing the, the, button. the button to open the doors yeah. for people, and everyone thinks he's super cute. So <laughs> it's a good icebreaker. <laughs> so good. He's probably an expert at that. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's so good. Yeah, and then I serve on the praise team as well. And uh actually wanted to do that earlier than when I did start, but it felt, like, a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Um, earlier on just because I had a lot of stuff going on in my life. I mean, I have three kids and Mm -hmm. a husband and a house and a job. So um, it just felt like a lot. But um, when there was the recruitment, the little recruitment sessions, uh, a couple of people encouraged me to go. So I decided to go and I didn't know if anything would come off of it. Um, But now here I am and I'm serving on that team and it's good. I love it. just because it's like my favorite way to worship and mm. praise God. I've been singing like my whole life, not mm-hmm. professionally or anything like that, but yeah, it's yeah. my favorite. Love oh, it. That's nice. so good. Mm-hmm. I love that, like um, how we are blessed. Like you also want to bless others that yeah. way. And I mean, I even like for my own experience, the same thing, like the way yeah. I was blessed when I got into this church, the same way I wanted to, Get right back forward totally yeah. and it's the same for both of those things because yeah. obviously love the welcomingness of the greeting team but when it came to the worship team like one of my favorite parts about coming to church is listening to the music mm-hmm. i love it you guys yeah. are awesome yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so i just wanted to be a part of that too it's mm. awesome yeah um so i think the question that we have for you is what brought you here, though, to the couch? <laughs> Why are you here? Okay, one question that's yeah. going to take up the entire podcast. <laughs> uh, so why am I at CIV? Yeah. How did I how'd end up you, at CIV? How did you get here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so a lot brought me here. Um, a lot of little pieces. There's not, like, one thing. Um, of course, it's your question because <laughs> it's, like, who just comes off the street and <laughs> comes into CIV. Um, Well, um, I don't know where to start. Let me think. Okay, so I feel like I can't tell my story without bringing up my father. Mm -hmm. He was a huge part of my story. Mm -hmm. Uh, My my dad was a Christian. Uh, He knew the Bible from front to back. 
very well. <laughs> um, and he had a massive impact on my life, like both positive and negative. Mm -hmm. He has taught me a lot about who to be and who not to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, I background, I did go to church as a kid. Mm -hmm. There was a church that I went to when I was quite young, like maybe up to age five. Mm -hmm. I may be telling this wrong because obviously don't maybe my memory isn't great yeah. from back then. <laughs> but there was some drama that happened in that church and my family and I actually didn't find this out till like recent years, but my family actually got kicked out of that church. Oh. Okay. So trauma mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. I know like a lot of my family members have very much like rejected Christianity mm -hmm. as a whole, probably because of things involved with that and mm -hmm. other things in the church. I don't really know. Those aren't really my stories to tell. Uh, when we left that church, my mom stopped going to church entirely. And my dad continued to try to like find churches that kind of fit his beliefs, I guess. Right. <laughs> I, I remember that he was really big on Sabbath. And we did go to this one church that I do have memories being in that was a seventh day church hmm. um but i what i know it wasn't seventh day adventist i think i'm pretty sure it was the one there's like one in aldergrove like on fraser highway right and yeah, it's okay. a seventh day church yes, yes, um yes. so I, that's my memory <laughs> going to some sabbath schools okay. there yeah um but that's about it um we he stopped he, we went there for a while we stopped going i don't know what happened <laughs> i don't know probably my dad <laughs> Because he was a little bit crazy. <laughs> um, but my dad, I wouldn't say he was a good example mm -hmm. of a Christian. The way he lived out his life and the way that he treated others, mm -hmm. especially the people that he loved. Mm -hmm. um, and so because of that, especially growing up, like I saw the the difference you know you start to you start to see like what your parents say versus what they do mm -hmm. yeah. which is why it's really important to lead by example mm -hmm. uh and so i didn't really want any part of that mm -hmm. and so yeah like if my dad is a christian I, that's not what i want to be at mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. um and my dad actually gave me a lot of like advice but like he just he was he more so just like preached and lectured to us and the ad advice that he gave us was not it was good advice like now thinking back to it i just couldn't take it from him because right. it was very you know. hypocritical yeah. um so yeah there's a lot in between there but we're talking about how i got here <laughs> <laughs> so my dad there was a lot of on and off relationship with him in my 20s and uh, I kind of got to a place like after going through challenges of my own and learning how to create boundaries and all these things uh, where I could have a relationship with my dad with boundaries. And I did because he got sick. He had kidney disease and then um, cancer. I'm going to forget what type of cancer it was right now, but it's not really important. Um, and it drew me to have a relationship with him and mm -hmm you know, because he possibly would pass away. And so I did. And he was always like, like, because I would come to him with some of my challenges. And he would always just be like, you need to read your Bible. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, dad. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Mm -hmm. That's the answer for you for everything. Mm -hmm. I get that now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... <laughs> I know he just wanted the best for me, mm. you know? Um, but so the year, his birthday, the year before he passed away, I promised him I would read the Bible. I'm mm. like, this is going to be the year, Dad. I'm going to read the Bible front mm. to back. I don't know. I just, he want, I was doing it for him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There must be something in there that I really needed to see that you wanted me to see. So I said I would do that. I didn't. And then, and he had given me this, like, beautiful Bible with my mm -hmm. name engraved in it. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so he, okay, there's a lot of stuff mixed in here. But, so COVID happened, the pandemic, that was a wild time for me. Mm -hmm. A lot of relationships, like, some lost, some just, yeah, experienced a lot of turmoil mm -hmm. with really close people to me. Um, 
then my daughters were preteens and I was experiencing massive struggles in parenthood with Mm -hmm. them. And I was also experiencing some troubles in my relationship in those couple of years that Mm -hmm. seem like a complete blur to me now. Um, But so anyways, my dad passed away in 2022. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had all this hard stuff going on and I was feeling super convicted about um, the Bible thing. (laughs) And so I decided to pick up my Bible and I started reading it. Mm and i tried so hard guys it was like a king james version mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and i didn't okay. know that there were other versions to read <laughs> no. and i never yeah. really read the bible before like i remember like classic stories like mm-hmm, uh, the mm-hmm. prodigal son and like <laughs> you know adam and eve and noah's ark and mm-hmm. all those things but like i never read the bible mm-hmm. yeah. and i'm like who reads this <laughs> like, yeah it was like shakespeare, yeah. Yeah. shakespeare yeah. <laughs> i think i got to leviticus leviticus like that's pretty that's deep pretty for, impressive. <laughs> yeah that's pretty good and at that point i think that's where they start going over all the like gender like the yeah names. all the names yeah and i was like i can't do this anymore like, <laughs> this is torture <laughs> and so English, too. i yeah. you know my husband he's not a christian um and but I kept saying to him, like, I just, I said I would read this Bible and I really just want to do the right thing because I told him I would do it. Mm-hmm. And how am I going to do it? Mm-hmm. Like, do I need to find a Bible study group? Like, I don't know any Christians. I have no Christians in my life. Oh, like, wow. zero. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where am I going to find this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, do I go to a church? Do I, do I like Google a Bible study group? Like, what do I do? <laughs> and, um, my husband's just like just pick a church being like the supportive partner that he is mm-hmm. um if this is what you want to do just pick a church and like if it doesn't work out then find another one mm-hmm. and if it doesn't work out find another one, you know um and maybe it's not for you but mm-hmm. go ahead and funnily enough at that same time where i was kind of you know experiencing that and questioning these everything <laughs> in my life and um what, like, how am I seeking out a church right now? <laughs> um, my lovely son, who was in preschool at the time, he had some friends at preschool that had gone to, to church. Mm-hmm. And so he was in my ear randomly, oddly, same time. Uh, Mom, what's a church? And asking mm-hmm. me to go to a church. So <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> this has got to mean something like i need yeah, to seek wow. something out. so like my dad passing away was super bittersweet like i was very happy that i kind of got to, not got to know him but like got had a closer relationship with him before um he passed away but also like him passing there were there were a lot of pieces to it like i pretty much watched my dad die mm-hmm. and there's something about watching someone die and Mm. like their physical body being there, Mm -hmm. but them not being there anymore Mm. that I'm like, there's something more to this. Like, Mm -hmm. I, I feel like, like there's been a lead up to this time of me joining the church where I started to get a little bit more like spiritual, I guess. Um, but it wasn't about God. It was like, Mm. there's some higher power. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, It got a little bit weird sometimes, like, (laughs) where I was like, I can manifest my life. Like, just, yeah, Mm -hmm. spiritual. Anyway, seeing my dad die was like his spirit was gone from him. Mm -hmm. Interesting experience. And then I feel like him passing really kind of, like, broke down a wall for me. Mm -hmm. And then I was going through all this trouble in my life that I felt... It was a time in my life where I realized that I have major control issues and there were a lot of things in my life that I couldn't control anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, what is the answer to this? Mm-hmm. Like, I just, just like seeking answers, seeking something more. And yeah, there kind of was like a wall broken down for me with my dad passing because he was like that wall because he was the example of mm-hmm. a Christian for me and I didn't want to be that. Um and so with all of this going on 
I said to God, <laughs> and I guess this would have been my first moment of like actually talking to God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I was like, I'm gonna give you one chance <laughs> <laughs> yep. to show me like a different side of this and like who you are. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm at a loss right now. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. Um, and I need help and I need community and I'm not finding it where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I said. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and I, yeah. um, we, so we drove by CIV all the time because we live pretty close. Mm -hmm. And I saw the kids zone sign and I'm like, oh, I guess that would be fun for my son if I'm going to pick a church and walk in. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I took, me, just me and my son, we just moseyed on into the church in the valley. <laughs> and that was a weird experience for me, like walking into church and like, yeah, just having, like I said, no Christians in my life mm -hmm. and whatever, brand new, I'm just going to give this thing a chance. Mm -hmm. So I came in very skeptical. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this whole experience has been, uh, like some people have said to me that I've really like dove into this and like really um like responded to god too mm -hmm. um it's like i wasn't it wasn't a huge part of my upbringing i wasn't just raised in it so all of this has been a choice for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so i feel like it's it's different mm -hmm. um and yeah so anyway we came into to church in the valley i went straight up with him to kid zone and um I was like, I'm going to sit with him in kid zone because I don't trust this place <laughs> or any of these people. Fair. Honestly, <laughs> fair. You don't know what you're walking into. So yeah, I get it. Exactly. Yeah. There was nothing wrong with it that yeah. I was like spooked or anything. Yeah. Like that. I was just like, I don't know. Yeah. Not I don't know about these Christian yeah, exactly. people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just give your kid up. Just yeah, like, okay. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, so I, I went in there with him and I sat through um, a Sabbath school as well. And Okay, first of all, rewind. Coming up the stairs <laughs> to Kid Zone, my son was like, Mom, I love this place. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm like, okay, okay, too soon, but <laughs> you're like, I'm glad you like it. Wait, but I don't yet. Yeah. Let's calm down. Yeah. Do you remember when yeah. that, like, you first came to CIV? So it was, it's been two and a half years okay. so far. So I think it was 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because my dad passed in February 2022, and I think it was, like, June yeah, 2022. Summertime. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um. So, yeah, then we went, yeah, we went up to, oh, well, going back to the Sabbath school thing, <laughs> sat in Sabbath school with him, and I was just, like, wowed, because it was so wholesome, <laughs> and yeah. I just couldn't believe that, because whoever was teaching, I can't remember who it was at the time was asking the kids if they had any prayer requests and the things that were coming out of these kids mouths i was like i've never heard a kid say these things before mm -hmm. like this is where my son needs to be like <laughs> they were just so good like praying for family members to like fly over safely from wherever they were like praying for their sick like i don't know mm -hmm. I, like you I, you just expect like four or five six year olds yeah. to be like i want a toy <laughs> 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 like, but yeah, so that was intriguing to me. Hmm. And then um, Pastor Walter took me on a tour of the entire church that day um, and prayed for me. That was interesting because mm -hmm. I've never really had someone like <laughs> right. pray for me. Yeah. Um, but I accepted it and that was cool. And he gave me a pamphlet for FVA, hmm. the school. And I was like, my kids are never going to go to the school. <laughs> like, there's no way. <laughs> oh my um, because my kids have gone to public school their whole lives. And right. like, I'm just like, uh, the fact that, like, this must be so strange for my kids to see. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, I was telling um, Pastor Abraham this experience, but my kids, when they were younger, so part of me rejecting Christianity was the fact that 
my dad who was who he was but he also tried to like secretly indoctrinate my kids when they were young and i was like uh no like like, don't no don't go there (laughs) yeah um and then one time when they were probably like six and seven we were at this park and it was like a beautiful sunny day and there was this church there and they were trying to like engage with the kids and pull them in with candy and stuff and i was like (laughs) full of rage like pulled my kids out of there and like took off from the park (laughs) so for my kids to see where i am today it must be weird Hmm. um and so yeah for them to like how is this happening Mm -hmm. like how (laughs) so yeah some things were happening in the public school that i was really not jiving with Mm -hmm. and i kind of was like I was done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't know what the next step was going to be, but it was like private school or I was homeschooling them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get into that. But yeah, I I brought this pamphlet home. Um, Pastor Walter connected me to another person who goes here who now I'm really close friends with. And she had kids that were um, like a few years older than my kids, but mm-hmm. really interestingly, like the same age gaps okay. between the kids. Um, and she's, he's like, oh yeah, I'll connect you. Like you guys should hang out. Mm-hmm. Well, we just like connected pretty quickly and decided to go for dinner together oh. and connected. And she had kids that went to FEA mm-hmm. that had been at public school. And that's why Pastor Walter connected us right, because right, right. he's like, oh, oh well, nice. this is her experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had dinner with her and um the next day i'm like i'm signing my kids up for this oh, school wow. like just her story mm-hmm. and it's been great ever since pretty mm-hmm. much That's i mean awesome. my kids didn't really like me the first year but <laughs> it's all good now yeah, yeah. Um, and it's been a really good experience for charles but i guess that kind of sums up how i got here mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like logical <laughs> right. when i think about it um it doesn't make sense to me um i have a lot of stuff like I don't know. There's my past is a little wild. Uh, when I was on stage the other day, I just had this weird moment because I had a, f- a friend that came to church, mm-hmm. and she's been a couple times with me, mm-hmm. um, and this is very new to her too. Mm-hmm. And I was just like seeing. Okay, you know when you like are in your car and you're listening to your music versus like when you're in your car and you're listening to your music with somebody else and mm-hmm. you're like hearing it through their ears mm-hmm. and you're like are do they like this song yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> like you know, the validation <laughs> like, it was just like it was like i was seeing my experience through her mm-hmm. eyes and i'm like she must think this is insane <laughs> like i on this stage yeah. singing and praising god mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. like she's seen me through the depths of my darkness like mm-hmm. yeah. all these things in my life mm-hmm. and so i don't know it's just it's just pretty crazy i can imagine what she must be thinking of that yeah moment, right? wow. yeah yeah so yeah it's wow. it's been a journey yeah. wow that's crazy <laughs> yeah that's yeah. It's cool to see how, I mean, Pastor Walter knew that it'd be a good idea to connect you with someone who had kids in public school. Mm-hmm. To, yeah. To, like, it's just, like, God's just moving all the chess pieces. No, you know. <laughs> like, I, perfectly. Actually, and like like I said, I, I asked God, like, I said, you got one more chance. Like, show me. And since I came into this church, it's been, like, thing after thing after thing. Like, I... I connected with Pastor Walter. He connected me with somebody. That change happened with the schools. I needed help finding, like, counselors for my kids. I found that through the church. I also found my therapist through the church. Those have been, like, huge blessings. Then I asked God, like, okay, like, I have nobody in my life that is a Christian. Like, I need community. So, Mm -hmm. Phil, like, make my circle people that Mm -hmm. love you Mm -hmm. and that's what I have now. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just been blessing after blessing. And I think that, um, it's not just because I'm asking him, Mm -hmm. but it's because I've been responding as well. Mm. And that's, you know, um, I think Aaron was, had said something on stage the other day that made me laugh because he was talking about his, I think he said his dad or somebody talking about the wise man versus the smart man. Mm-hmm, yeah, and dad. that was one of the things that my dad used to go on and on about. <laughs> 
And I was that person that I'm like, no, I see this person doing it that way, but, and it didn't work out, but it's going to work for me. Mm -hmm. Like (laughs) I just had to test the waters Mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. Um, And I always had like that gut, you know, I feel like we all, we have this innate like gut feeling or Mm -hmm. maybe you want to call it the Holy Spirit or or whatever. Some people might call it intuition that we know the right thing to do. And every time we don't follow it, like things go bad. (laughs) It's not a good outcome. And I've just done that my whole life. And I just, I don't know, making this change, I've just been like, I'm going to do what I need to do, Mm. like what feels right, what God's telling me to do. And so, yeah, it's not like blessings just happen. It's like, I I have to make the move as well. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. And I like that you said, like, you you asked him, and he was like, okay, girl, but, like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what sometimes... Challenge accepted. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sometimes we have to just be, like, tell, put it out there. Like, I mean, like you said, like, there's always, like, this feeling, like, whether it be the Holy Spirit or whatever. Yeah. But it's up to us to, like, take that step. Mm-hmm. And then he's always there just, like, holding out his hand. It just... Right. Finally latching on to it. And yes. then he's like, okay, I'm taking you here and I'm taking you here and I'm taking yeah. your kids here. Yes. <laughs> but I love also yeah. that like, and what I, when I sit down and I talk to like moms, mm-hmm. um, their children are always like the key point I feel like to their journey. Right. Um, yeah. Because even, um, I'm going to speak a little bit about my personal life but the same thing happened to my mother Mm -hmm. like it was a child who was she she told me when she was first coming to the faith was um she now has a daughter who goes to fraser valley and she's in kindergarten so i just saw her last week so it's it's really cool like full circle but um the little girl was praying for my mom saying like i wish you'd come i wish you'd come and then the girl when she was done praying that's when my mom walked through the doors and the little girl was like, oh, it's Marisol. And she pointed <sighs> to her mom. She's just like, oh, my goodness, that's so crazy because my daughter was just praying for you to come through those doors because he invited her. Like, yeah. And um, and then she stayed. Mm-hmm. And it's so crazy how, like, the faith of a child, like, sometimes that's all you need. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You just have yeah. to get down to that level. Yes. And God can just work in, like, miraculous ways. Yeah, so, for yeah. sure. My son is, it's just so amazing to see him, like, yeah and now he's serving with the pushing the button for yeah. everyone yeah. and he goes i believe in god the most out of everybody in this <laughs> like he just oh it's so yeah it's so like innocent and pure and yeah yeah Hold puts on emphasis that, on but. faith as big as a mustard seed right yes 100 <laughs> like, percent. the littlest guy yeah yes. that's awesome yeah and he's probably right yeah he's yeah. honestly probably right <laughs> we all need to be like charles guys we will be like charles yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so no it's sweet. that's definitely it's really cool um just because like our our faith journeys is not a, a one-way street it's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's him and it's us yeah and that song um jesus take the wheel by mariah not mariah uh, carrie underwood carrie underwood, carrie underwood. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i don't know who i was talking to about this and I, I think it was pastor nim who was saying like that song is totally wrong <laughs> jesus tells you where to go yeah and we take the wheel yes right jesus yes. is our navigation Amen. System, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah so i mean it's just awesome that like yeah he these the little things you know mm-hmm. maybe if it wasn't for your son coming up to you he was like what's church yeah and you, you wouldn't have gone oh god <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah well do you want to see you one? got you know? me there yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's just really cool. I love, I have a, I have a thing with, I mean, with Ryan, he's our, the host as well. Um, any like minor convenience, I just, for me, I just go, that's God. Yeah. You know? Just cause yeah. just like, I yeah. mean, why wouldn't, why wouldn't it be? You know? Yeah. Just like when you're going to sleep, p- trying to put the charger in the bed, <laughs> you put it right into the outlet without even looking like, oh, dude, that was God. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. no problem in thanking God for the smallest yeah. things, smallest oh, details, right? So, part of sure. gratitude, yeah, 100%. I, exactly. So, it's just like, it's just really cool to see that mm-hmm. happening, like, real time. Because I've, I've been yeah. in the church my whole life. I've, mm-hmm. I went to FEA from kindergarten to grade 12. Yeah. I graduated there. Great school. Yeah. Um, and so, it's really cool to see it happen to someone who's, 
you know, yeah, you were in the church and everything, but mm -hmm. you went through your whole journey and now mm -hmm. you, you've come to this church and like you're going through what we went through our whole lives in like two years. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. And yeah. It's just like it, it, your spirit must be just overjoyed <laughs> yeah just, it's pretty exciting yeah. yeah i feel pretty on fire <laughs> that's really cool um yeah i and like the responding thing too and taking the wheel it's like i like to relate it to what i do because i'm a coach like i help people with their nutrition and i'm mm. a personal trainer and it's like i can I can write you this plan all day like mm -hmm. i can guide you i can educate you i can tell you all the things that you need to do but like you're not paying me for the job to get done. Mm -hmm. You're paying me for the guidance and then you have right. to you execute. Have to work. Yeah. Like you have to do the work. And so, yeah, it's been, but it's like, it's so good with like doing the work and then seeing the results that come with it. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's been really nice. And um, it's interesting looking back now to my life in the past and seeing all the ways that, he was working mm. and he has been working the whole way through things that you know i thought i'm like like why is this happening to me <laughs> like it all makes sense yeah. once it all unfolds and like the doors that were closed on me and the situations that i was in and yeah how they kind of changed me as a person too so mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah yeah um i'm gonna ask well actually before i ask i'm just gonna say <laughs> Um, Sarah's getting baptized this week. Um, at the time of the release, Sarah got baptized uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> a week right, and a half yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's that's a huge, huge decision. And yeah. I want to congratulate you on that because that's awesome. Thank you. Um, I have to ask, <clears throat> when did you make that decision to dedicate your life to Christ through baptism? Um, it's tough. I, it's been a while I've wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. I just, so I've been doing Bible studies just because, and Bible studies have been going on for like, I want to say a year. Um, cause I think I had made the decision. Yeah. Probably about a year ago, but then I was like, I just got to make sure I'm, I know I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to kind of like understand more, um, and so through the whole process, it was more just like c confirming for me hmm. that this is what I wanted to do. Um, and also, I think, you know, coming into this and not having been in the church forever and all of the things that I've done in my life and all the mistakes I've made <laughs> and all of my failures, I kind of felt like, and I know this isn't the case, but I'm like, I I still have stuff to work on. I mm -hmm. need to be better and like mm -hmm. so um this church has been super helpful just because of all the sermons and like the connections I've made and talking to people and just helping me to understand that like that's a continual growth process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um and I don't there's no like level I need yeah. to reach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm just excited to do it and have my relationship like deepen mm -hmm. with him even even further and i've also just come to a point in my journey where i don't feel um not embarrassed but i don't feel weird about telling people about it anymore mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. i was it was super weird in the no, beginning because i'm like that, what yeah. are people gonna think like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i gotta be the last person someone thinks is gonna become <laughs> yeah. a christian maybe not the last person but i I'm sure it was very like, unex it was unexpected mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Um, and yeah, so I recently, my, I, my husband recently had a friend over and I had put on Instagram that I was going to get baptized. I was just kind of putting it out there. Cause I'm like, you know, who, who knows who will reach out and wants to see me get baptized. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of interesting, I wasn't expecting them to reach mm -hmm. out and they're going to come to my baptism. So yeah. that's why I did it. Um, but yeah, my husband had a friend over and he had, heard that i was getting baptized because mm -hmm. i had posted about it and he asked me about it <laughs> and i i was like oh this is interesting and like it's like how do i it made me think of how i talk to my kids like because at each stage of their growth you kind of have to speak to them differently mm -hmm. um or like 
give them certain you will give them certain information that's based on like what they can handle right, yeah. at, at that age, I mm-hmm. guess, age appropriate. Um, and I felt like <laughs> I had to figure out that level. Right. And then I was thinking about like um, when Pastor Nim did that sermon about like not being a weird Christian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, Sarah, like <laughs> maybe you just like take it down. <laughs> like, this fire, this fire had a, like, but I'm like, yeah. okay, I've gone from being super awkward and weird and like, don't ask me about this thing, part of my life to mm-hmm. like, on fire about it to the point where I'm like, okay, just take it down and watch for these people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just been an amazing journey for me. And I just, I guess just want to like shout it from the rooftops, like let everybody know that this is my decision because so much has changed for me Mm -hmm. in such a positive way and like one of the huge things has just been like my Mm self-worth um yeah it's crazy yeah like just how much more valuable i feel and loved and Mm -hmm. like he's the source of my strength and he has made me like my connection with him and relationship with him has made me a better wife. It's mm. made me a better mother. It's made me like more loving and mm. like want to serve and give from a place where I feel kind of like filled mm-hmm. um, instead of a place of like emptiness and feeling like my needs aren't met. Mm-hmm. I feel like I get so much from him that I was missing, mm. um, that I was looking elsewhere for. Um, yeah, and I, you know, like, there have been, s- throughout my life, I've used so many things to cope, mm-hmm. whether it be, like, it's been food, it's been drugs, it's been alcohol, it's been people, like, everything, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, with this piece, because I grew up in, like, a pretty, like, toxic environment in my household. Mm-hmm. My parents' relationship was pretty abusive, and it just wasn't great, and that kind of destroyed that, like, self-worth piece for me. And so to have that massive shift in my 30s is like, there's no denying. Mm -hmm. Like where else could that have come from? Because that's been a huge shift in my journey since I, since I accepted him. (laughs) And I think that, you know, the people around me probably would say that they can see the change. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's great because not only the people around you but like you said um your kids like Mm -hmm. your kids behaviors and will reflect how you Mm -hmm. are now you know Mm -hmm. i didn't know you before yeah i'm I'm sure you like you know i'm sure you're a great person (laughs) before (laughs) before um you came to our church but um with all these things that you said that has now become a part of your life Mm -hmm. it's definitely going to um reflect your kids are going to see that and they're just going to want to be like that. And mm-hmm. it's, yeah, that's awesome. Cause that's just like, you're not the only one saved here, you know, like you are, yeah, it's, you're just the beginning of something big. So yeah. And that's, that's awesome. so exciting to me because, and it's interesting how things work and how God works because, you know, even though there was like a lot of negative that came out of things with my dad, my dad also prayed for me like all of the time Wow! and like how powerful that is. Even if it's coming from somebody who literally like was a source of your pain, Mm -hmm. like he had pain in his life that came out in anger Mm -hmm. because there were things that he didn't, you know, deal with Mm -hmm. a lot of really, really, really painful things from his childhood that I can't even imagine having going through. Mm -hmm. Um, But that came out in anger and it came out in hurting other people, but he still read his Bible and he still (laughs) believed in God and loved God and prayed and he prayed a lot. And so I feel like maybe his prayers, you know, went through (laughs) and and that's part of why I'm here. So it's funny how things work like that, just with having that kind of, the negative stuff come from the church Mm -hmm. um and then how it can be turned into like 
such a beautiful thing how god can use that Mm -hmm. right how god can use the pain and turn it into purpose really um and i hope that it makes a huge different for difference for my kids lives i've seen it i feel like i've seen it already Mm um yeah that's awesome yeah when you said that um even just like thinking about my own faith journey um there is never going to be a level that like we have to reach even like mm-hmm. us who grew up in the church like i mean i was baptized at i think i was 17 um mm-hmm. but even still like i'm such a different person than when i was baptized mm-hmm. and this whole journey like life and also this faith journey is always like changing and mm-hmm. it's always a new day like and i wake up and i you know I know, like, I choose God, but also, like, where is he going to lead me today? What's he going to do with me today? Mm-hmm. What's the challenges? And um, it's always, like, that you have to cling on to that little faith that you first had when you, like, stepped into this unknown. Yeah. Even though it was, like, kind of, like, fed, like, the second we were out of the womb type of thing. Mm-hmm. But um, even, like, us who were, you know, sometimes yeah. we forget about, I don't know, it, but... But I feel like it's so powerful to, like, just have that faith, too. Like, I know that there are going to be trials that are going to come. Like, I've been through a lot already, and Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, what's the next thing you offer me? Mm -hmm. Um, But it feels different now. Mm -hmm. It feels like, okay, even things that, you know, would stress me out and worry me before, there's just a different sense of peace about it because... You know, and the whole like me being a control freak has Mm -hmm. been a huge part of my journey and learning Mm -hmm. to like let that piece go Mm -hmm. and like give it to God. And like I can only do what's in my power and just trusting him that he'll take care of the Mm -hmm. rest. Like knowing that and having having that knowingness helps me to kind of move forward knowing, okay, like the trials are going to come, but Mm -hmm. I I know you've got me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I know that I have the strength with you to get through these things. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I, going back to the the Holy Spirit gut thing. Yes. Um, it's just like I mean, I have yet to get baptized. I'm 25. I'm, yeah. I, I was born in the church. You never everything. But my dad always told me, mm-hmm. um, get baptized when you're ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like like don't get like a lot of my friends got baptized young, and that's that's great. That's yeah. that's them. Um, but just because they got baptized yeah that's not the holy spirit talking the holy spirit right. is you know that gut feeling yes um and I, I i always thought to myself like when like what what is this feeling i like i would pray to god <laughs> just like like when when am i gonna you know when am yeah. i gonna get that feeling am i gonna be baptized are you gonna come and i'm not gonna be baptized yet you know um and it's it's actually like it's it's insane the that feeling that I want to get baptized. You know, mm-hmm. it is, it's truly a gut feeling. Yeah. Just like, mm, maybe I, I shouldn't go to the mall this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What <laughs> but yeah. just like, like that, that feeling of wanting to finally get baptized, mm-hmm. especially as someone who's been in the church yeah. his entire life, is something so, it's surreal. Like, yes. it's just like, I think, I've, I've, I've seen the Holy Spirit move in my life before, mm-hmm. but in the way that, he called me to to baptism Mm -hmm. it was just like oh yeah yeah Yeah, this is it let's go yeah finally yeah you just know and i feel like that's such a good good advice that you were given because then it's not like i'm doing this because i should Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i'm doing this because i want i really want to like because of yeah whatever yeah whatever personal reason you have or whatever that feeling is that you have Mm -hmm. yeah and my dad wasn't born into the church he was mm-hmm. like he he had a similar like your story reminds me of my dad's mm-hmm. it's similar where he my dad was or yeah my 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 grandmother she was receiving bible study and my grandfather was like a devout catholic he's an italian man like devout yeah. catholic and um my grandmother started bringing the bible over to their house and then started bringing him to the church yeah. <laughs> um and my grandfather just started reading the bible and then he um he died he passed away early at, at 53 wow. um something to do with the liver mm-hmm. and my dad was aware of that he was doing bible study and while he was on the bed my dad um promised him he's just like 
I'm gonna Interesting. I'm gonna start studying the Bible. Yeah. Huh. And um yeah, he was twenty, twenty one when mm-hmm. my father passed away or my grandfather passed away. And he studied the Bible. It worked. Yeah. It <laughs> he, worked. He, he didn't went, have the King James version. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. I'm not sure what yeah. version he had, but it wasn't ye, ye, like old. It didn't have the word ye and die in it. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it worked out for him. Um, and the crazy thing is, is that after he got into the church, he gave um, another person Bible study. Mm-hmm. And that person gave my mom Bible study, who wasn't in the church as well. Okay. And like, it's just that like chain reaction, all those chess pieces. Mm-hmm. And I'm here on yeah. the couch talking to you, about to be baptized. Who knows when, maybe next year a little bit, but cool. Yeah. It's just like the way he moves is it's, it's, there's, there's no way that I can't believe that he's, mm-hmm. real. you know, like, it's not like that unwavering faith. It wavers sometimes, sometimes the world, like, you know, stuff yeah. happens and you'd be like, what, why, you why? know, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but it, at this point, I've come to realize I don't have to ask why anymore. Right. Because I've seen him move. Yes. Right? So it's like, okay, well. There's a reason. You know, there's a reason. You move, you're moving this way. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. life goes on. And, mm-hmm. yeah. Just trust it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So trust it. Go on. It's awesome to see it happen in your life. Mm-hmm. In like a very fast pace. <laughs> yeah. Really fast. Very fast track. Really fast. <laughs> yeah. But, Sometimes I yeah. question myself. I'm like, did they just work on me like real quick? Like, <laughs> did I just get like heavily indoctrinated like so yeah. fast? I'm like, no, this is what I want. <laughs> exactly. But it goes back There's to a lot of, yeah. yeah. It goes back to you like receiving it and yes. being open to it and yeah. moving yourself as well. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah. the result has been nothing but positive. So, mm-hmm. yeah. There you go. Yeah. And look <laughs> at you now, like, change, like, just hearing you guys is both talking right now, like it's crazy. The impact we have on people, whether it be yeah, like, whether in our say lives, that too. like people change people. Like, yes, and it's been wild since I've been in the church because yeah, I was like standoffish about talking about it and stuff. But I have like one of my close friends who started coming to me, coming to the church with me. Um, one of my sisters who, out of nowhere, asked to start coming to church with me and she's been here a few times Mm -hmm. um and then another sister who's like completely accepted jesus into her life again so i'm not saying that i was necessarily Mm -hmm. the person but i was definitely part of that action of like that that happening yeah um and we just i think we don't realize how much of an impact we have on people Mm mm-hmm And how much we influence people. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for like you two as well and the crew and next gen because that's really important for my kids Mm -hmm. too, right? Because they don't want to listen to me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just mom. You guys are like kind of cool. So (laughs) thank you for kind of cool. I'm not very cool. (laughs) I'm not very cool cool anymore, guys. Some people think I'm cool, but not my kids. So, Mm. um, so I think that that's really important to have the young people influence the the next gen yeah yeah um, there you go yeah but we have such an impact yeah in the way that we live our lives 100%. and 100 percent the example like you show. said lead by faith too like like i have it's, parents and i get it generational and also religious trauma yeah like, can 100 percent play a factor in all of that but um i think if we live genuinely and authentically and even like your you said your dad Along the way, he was praying for you. Yeah. And he was the one who... Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, honestly, never know. Funny how God works, isn't it's it? It's really, yep. it's really funny. <laughs> he's like a comedian, actually, if you think about it. Like, he just he's, likes to crack jokes and he's just... He's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, looking back at my life, I'm like, okay, yeah, you were there and you were there. Yeah. I'm like, interesting. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, that could have been a moment where I yeah. could have turned my life around, but that didn't work. So then you yeah. moved over here and tried this <laughs> other thing, and that didn't work. Yeah. And so, oh, this is where you got me. Yeah. <laughs> like, this yeah. was the yeah. perfect combination. But you kept trying for me. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you kept pushing me in that direction. Like, you really wanted me um, to be there. So mm-hmm. that's that's me. an interesting perspective to to look back when, you know, you were angry at the church. You were angry at God. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that you're here and now that you can look back and 
think about all those times that something happened in particular and then yeah like like oh wait yeah that's that's why that happened yeah. you know it's that's really cool to have that perspective yeah it's all about perspective right yeah. and um it's really sad that there are some churches that are that way mm-hmm. and i've since i've you know been back to church i've heard lots of different stories from people about negative experiences and i'm like that's too bad because mm. now i'm having a really good experience and mm-hmm. it's been nothing but good experiences so it's not about god at all mm-hmm. we we associate it with god so we blame we can blame god but yeah. it's not god right it's systems and churches and certain people so that's again just highlighting why we have to be a good example and how much impact we have on people Mm -hmm. (laughs) that we can go so far as to make someone leave and never turn back right yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah but yeah i'm just happy i'm here yeah (laughs) well i'm so happy you're here too and also your kids are here and um yeah and how just walking through those doors like it's it, I can I get it. Even when you're like, this is scary. I'm like gripping onto my son's hand. He's just like <laughs> not letting him go. And I get it. And here you are. You're just letting him wander around. Yeah, yeah. And he's out here actually opening the doors for people. Yeah. And it's just God just flips it all around. Like you said, perspective. Yeah. Until we. And I think it also takes like um, you have to step into those moments of vulnerability too. And acceptance too mm-hmm. along the way. Because like you said, like you said, you were very stubborn. We all yeah. are, not just you. Super stubborn. <laughs> we are, like, we want our lives to be the way, like, we're like, Kate, hey, no, this is what I want it. And God's like, nope, actually not at all. I have a different plan Yeah, for you. no, 100%. Yeah. I think we're also yeah. learning that, too, in our 20s, too, when you step into something and then you're like, okay, well, that's not what I thought it was going to yeah. be like. And it, there is such, like, a vulnerable aspect to it too mm-hmm. right like you you have to you have to make the moves right like mm-hmm. nobody else is going to do that for you it's like again i'm relating this to what i do but it's like going into the gym right you know you need to do this thing and it's going to be better for your health mm-hmm. you got to you got to go like mm-hmm. you got to get past that thing whether it's just like going in there and walking on a treadmill before you do the thing that's intimidating you, like touching the weights or whatever it may be, but it's like you gotta get yourself in that in yeah. that uh, atmosphere. Yeah, you gotta walk in there. So there's a huge amount of vulnerability. Yeah, mm-hmm. but thank you for being yeah. brave. I also want to put that out there. It's it's a scary thing. Also, like it's someone who doesn't know. You said there you had no Christian like like. Anything no. that's must be like so you're like yeah, who are these wow. people they're so nice like, what? like <laughs> but yeah no it is a scary thing and I, I remember walking in and like um, somebody who I know now but um, invited me over to her house <laughs> she probably what <laughs> but she invited me over to her house to like hang out with her like my kids hang out with her kids mm. <laughs> I was like yeah I'll think about it <laughs> I'm yeah. just like. I can't go to her house like, yeah like what there's no way like, yeah my kids might say some things to her kids and like we're gonna be in trouble <laughs> so funny. funny i don't feel that way at all but you yeah. just assume like not being a christian and and having this idea of what like christians are i'm like i don't know maybe i thought they were like pretentious mm-hmm. or like super righteous and mm-hmm. i was not that so mm-hmm. Um, that was my assumption. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I learned that that's not the Mm -hmm. case. And I met some really awesome down-to-earth people here. (laughs) But at first, yeah, it's scary. It is, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I don't fit in here. So, yeah, I try to be like, try to bring that out when I'm greeting, you know, Mm. like to not seem that way. We can't, yeah. Like, don't like... I get you when you say there's like are, there are people out there who are like really stuck up and I think also mm-hmm. that's what I appreciate about CIV is breaking down those walls it's like love God love people serve yes. people that's literally what it is um, yeah. regardless of you know all our differences and our opinions and mm-hmm. all the things we want to say and all the things that we want I think really like it literally comes down to just loving one loving. another and that's literally yeah. what got you to stay <laughs> you know what I yes. mean that love you could feel it like outpouring yeah and 
it goes to show like that can change a person's life and mm-hmm. as Christians and I feel like here at CIV that's I hope we continue to just pour into people regardless of anything yeah. and that just changes that changes lives so. yeah and then seeing you serve now yeah and wanting to do that through worship mm-hmm. um I don't know if I can ask you like how how do you also not knowing anything about like much of worship and then stepping into that place of being vulnerable. <laughs> that's another, another yeah, another that's piece. like yeah. So um, when it came to that, yeah, that was a huge vulnerability piece too. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have any like yeah the educational piece when it comes to music. I don't like read music. I haven't been taught professionally. I just used to sing with my dad when. Because there was a lot of, like, musicians on my dad's side of the family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my dad sang, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was very musically gifted. Um, so that's all I had. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if they're going to want me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was vulnerable. It's mm-hmm. still a little bit scary for mm-hmm. me. And because I would sing all the time, but mm-hmm. I don't, like, sing in, in yeah. front of crowds. Yeah. Yeah. I might have done that once <laughs> as a kid. And... It was scary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I just go ahead. No, gonna... sorry. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I think it's really cool because um, you were shadowing the day or the weekend I was uh, leading praise as well. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like a full circle moment yeah. to you stepping into this big, you know, thing of, of worship and vulnerability. Um, and you didn't know what was going to come out on the other side. I mean, like, for the most part, like, okay, well, I'm going to sing up front. But yeah. you don't know the impact that you have on people's lives and their their Sabbaths and their weeks when you're yeah. up there singing. Um, yeah. And now we're here on the couch talking and yeah. you're telling about yourself and you're going to be baptized soon. It's just like, <laughs> it's like, wow, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, and I think it's, yeah, it's been it's been interesting being up there and then, like, you run into people after and they're like, thank you so much. And I'm like, oh, like, I don't know. Cause just when you're up there, like whatever we do rehearsal and stuff. But then when you're up there, it's just like, I'm just like praising God. Yeah. Like I would in the car. Yeah, like I'm just listening vibing. to my music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just exactly. being God. Yeah. No, for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Like it doesn't feel like I'm performing for someone or like if someone said like, good job up there. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, um, people enjoy it Mm -hmm. and um i'm happy that i'm able to like kind of help lead that Mm -hmm. for people Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah i mean i feel like there's so much you can tell us too um but (laughs) i guess for the sake of (laughs) this being a podcast episode um just i guess all the reflecting that we've you know you've had um leading you up to here Mm -hmm. if you could go back to your younger self Mm -hmm. what would you tell her what would you say oh how tough with this tough one with this one because i'm like what would i tell my younger self who didn't want to (laughs) listen yeah you know like i feel like a huge part of my journey has been not listening Mm. and trying things my own way Mm. and then the outcome from that and learning from it so and I also see that in my teens. Mm. So I'm trying to think, when you ask that question, I'm trying to think, what could I tell my teens? Mm. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> they don't want to listen to me either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I think the, mo- the thing that <clears throat> I find myself telling my teens, which feels like the same thing as my younger self, um, is just to trust that feeling. Mm. Whatever you want to call it at the time. For me now, it's the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. speaking. But listen to that Hmm. Hmm. like explore that like don't ignore it Hmm. um it's so powerful Mm -hmm. and it's also so powerful to not listen to it but Mm -hmm. in a negative way Mm -hmm. so following that is really really important and just a little reminder of that Mm -hmm. and i mean i could say all the things like you know you're so loved and you're so valued and you're so worthy, but like, I'm thinking about myself at that age. And like, I don't think that, I don't think someone saying that to me Mm. would have been enough for me to like change anything. 
I think a lot of me feeling like undervalued and like low self-esteem and all of that was because of the way that I was raised. Mm -hmm. And so that was just in me. You can't right. tell somebody that and then mm -hmm. just believe it when, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. that's kind of like what's ingrained. So just try your, trust your gut feeling mm -hmm. on things. Follow that. AKA trust the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. That's great. You say that. Cause I mean, when is this coming out? But this Saturday, I'm we're singing Trust in God. Mm -hmm. And it's just been a song. Like, usually I like to practice, if we're being honest. I like to start practicing, like, on Thursday. Um, probably Ooh, that's a little late. Yeah, I know. But the thing is, I know because I see the songs and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I then I'm like, one. yeah, I, like, I know that. Wait, pause. Because, <laughs> like, you, like, listen to the song. So I'm just like, but then I, this one song, I was like, let's listen to it, like, right now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and I just was like spending time with the lyrics and also i have not been in on like one a while so it's been kind of like out of routine for me mm -hmm. um but i was just like no you really have to just listen to this song and mm -hmm. like study it even though you've heard it yeah probably hundreds of times yeah but maybe she's gonna switch it up on yeah. you <laughs> exactly you different. Yeah. <laughs> no but just the whole yeah. thing regardless yeah. of what when you were not in the faith mm -hmm. just those little moments of like okay you look back you're like maybe that was why i did that and god was working it out and mm -hmm. you just have to like trust and lean into that so thank you again for being brave i think it takes a lot of strength also to just step into something mm -hmm. not knowing what the outcome is and here we are we have someone else on fire for christ and changing <laughs> the lives of others it's like you said a chain reaction yeah so yeah yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. amazes me all the time. So yeah. yeah. Well, thanks again for sitting here with us. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, if you guys, thanks for listening. Um, <laughs> but we always love sitting here and talking with um, our CIV family. I think there's so much we can learn from one another. And um, God is working through us all, whether it be at the gym or at church or at school or the hospitals you know and you guys are a part of that journey too so we'd love to sit with you guys if you ever do want to come on you are always welcome here um but yeah thanks again and don't forget to like and follow subscribe. and subscribe, yeah, yeah, subscribe. Share, yeah. <laughs> and share but um yeah thanks guys for listening um and like we like to end off here don't forget to love god Love people and serve the world. We'll see you. <laughs> Got it right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>